In this, the final instalment of the stadium tutorial, we'll focus on making the undulating roof. This is the first tutorial in this five part series to feature Railclone 2's new two dimensional array generator. In this tutorial, we'll explore how to use this generator to make a parametricized roofing style with controls for angle and depth. This style is made from three generators as illustrated by this node tree. At first glance, it looks complicated, but by breaking it down into three sections, it should be much easier to understand. In the first part, we'll be creating the main metal framework using the top, bottom and default inputs. In the second, we'll add a simple cantilever truss and in the final section, we'll create a glass skin with the composed sequence arithmetic and constant nodes. Let's get started by making the main trusses. Create a new rail clone object. Open the style editor and this time create a new array 2s generator. Add a spline object. And though the array will take two splines, you can also set them numerically from directly within the generator itself, or by connecting it to a new numeric parameter and controlling it from the parameters rollout here. In this case, we're going to use a spline to determine the X dimension, but we're going to use a parameter for the Y. So add a spline and pick, in this case, this spline section over here while we construct a style. We'll add a new segment and pick roof bottom from the scene. Wire this to the bottom side input. Come into the array, right click, go to export the Y size property, drag in a new numeric parameter and connect it to the newly exposed property. Make sure the numeric type is set to scene units, come over to the parameters rollout and change the value to 30 meters. To prevent segments from being sliced by any vertices we add to the base spline, come into Array 2S, go to Rules, and in X Bevel, change the mode type to None. We also want to control the rotation from a parameter, so let's also right click on the array again, go to Export, and then X Rotation, and drag down another numeric parameter, connect to the X Rotation, and this time set it to Float, and maybe name it Rotation. Over in the parameters rollout, I should now be able to control the rotation around the spline. Returning to the segment we just added, the pivot point lines up with the back line here, this, this kind of part of the triangle. In order to bring that down to match, go to the alignment Z setting and set it to pivot. Now let's clone this, pick roof vertical from the scene and attach this to the top side. And then finally we want the pieces in between that join the two together, so clone this a third time. And then pick Roof Horizontal from the scene. Connect this to the default input. To space it out, come in and change the right padding to 11.6 meters. It should now line up with the vertical elements in the top and bottom sections. If we now come in here, we just want to pull these things ever so slightly together so that they join up a little bit more cleanly. So if we go to roof bottom and go to the top padding, just take this down so it intersects ever so slightly. Just moving along, come to roof vertical and to close this gap up, come to transform and change the Y value to about negative 0.3. And finally, as you can see here, these cross members are not quite in the center of these bars so if we go back into roof horizontal and just change the X alignment to center to line them up correctly. So we now have the basis of the truss system we should be able to rotate it here maybe up to about 15 degrees you should have an adjustable length here so we can change this in and out and I think about 36 will be correct for the final stadium. So that's that section done now we'll add a cantilever on the end here and since we've already got something in the top section here the roof vertical we'll have to create a new array to add that so we'll do that by cloning this one so we'll click select it copy and paste now we'll disconnect all of the existing segments but leave the spline and the parameters attached now create a new segment pick the rooftop from the scene and attach it 
to the top side input. Like before, in order to get this to line up correctly, we'll change the X alignment to center, and the right padding this time is 11.579. We want to bring the pivot point down on the Z to center too. And we want to bring it on the Y axis to bottom so that it starts from here. And then finally it's a case of just adjusting it a little bit with the transform settings. So we'll come into transform and on the Z axis bring it up a little and on the Y bring it back. So the final part is to add the glass roof over the top. So to do that we'll clone the array generator one more time. So copy that and paste it. Disconnect the existing segment but keep the parameters and the spline. And this time we're going to build repeating patterns from these three sections here. So we have a larger framing element, we have glass and then we've got a bar. And we want to go bar, then glass, then bar and repeat that a few times and then finish again with another frame. Um, so to do that we can use sequence nodes. Um, so we'll just drag one of those in there and a new segment. In fact three segments, one for each of these. And we'll just bring these into the style. So let's just grab the frame first. Then the glass. And finally the bar. So we'll start with the frame. And let's attach this to the default input. So you can see that working there. And then we want a repeating facade glass and facade bar. So rather than attach these into the sequence lots of times, we'll, we'll compose them beforehand into one unit. So let's use a compose operator and go facade glass and then facade bar. And Rail Clone will now treat these as though they're one object. So we can add that there and you can see what's happening now. We now have frame, then facade glass, then bar, then frame. And maybe we want to finish with another frame. There we go. So now we can click on the sequence modifier and we can choose to repeat that compose a number of times. Maybe five times. But we want it to finish with a glass, not uh, with a bar. So we'll take this glass here and just add this to the sequence node and then just move it up so it comes before the facade frame. Something like that. And now we should have a frame, glass bar, glass bar, glass bar, glass bar, glass bar, glass frame. Um, and that's a quick way of doing that. Let's just put the material on there so we can see what's going on a little bit clearer. So it's called roof, just drag that onto there and it'll, it'll help us to see a little bit clearer what's going on. And the first thing we want to do is to offset it a little bit to bring it up on top of the truss before we go any further. So let's just go into the array and go into Z offset and just increase this so that this sits just atop the trusses. To keep it going. About there. There are a few things we need to solve. Um, it's obviously not quite long enough. It doesn't reach the end of the cantilevers. Um, and we want to cap it somewhere near the bottom too. So we'll fix the length first. What we're going to do is take the input which we've got here and just add a constant value on top of it. That way we can maintain the parametric nature of this object. So we're going to drag in a new constant parameter and uh, in this case change it to scene units and set the value to about 13 meters. Then we want an arithmetic operator and we're going to bring the numeric node up here which is the Y value plug that into there plug in the constant we just created and go to the arithmetic operator and make sure the operation is set to add which is its default and then wire this into the Y size you should find now this extends a little further if we want to bring it down a little we can just change the value we also have an end cap we can put on here to cover up this section at the back uh, so let's add a new segment node and pick this cap here from the scene it's called roof cap and connect this to the bottom side input just change the alignment pivot on the Y and the Z to pivot 
and we need to bring it down so that it meets up with the edge there so let's just bring the transform fixed Z value so it comes down over the top of that truss and just covers that up and then change the top padding to bring the glass down to meet it there's just one last thing I'd like to do to this style before I call it complete and that's to add a frame around the top as well as the sides somewhere for the glass to terminate and we'll just reuse the frame which is here so I'm going to clone it copy and paste it and just rotate it 90 degrees on the Z axis so with it selected go to transform rotation Z 90 degrees and plug this into the top side setting and that finishes off the frame along the top there now we should have a frame that we can adjust the rotation of and the length of and all that remains once that's finished is to assign it to the spline around the perimeter of the roof so once you're happy with it go to base objects pick the spline and assign it to roof spline and there we go and now what you may find is that in these corners it doesn't smoothly bend now if that happens it's because there aren't enough segments or vertices in the roof spline in order for it to deform smoothly we can override that by coming up to the style rollout and changing the number of curved steps basically the higher this is the smoother this deformation is going to be so if we change it to something really high like 200 you'll get much smoother deformation around those corners over the last five tutorials we've looked at how Railclone can help you to model detailed stadiums by creating glass walls, railings, advertising, seating, audiences and finally a fully parametric roof structure. Though stadiums were the focus of these videos, many of the techniques are applicable to a wide range of other situations. For more tutorials please keep watching this blog or visit our tutorials page, our Vimeo and YouTube channels or follow us on Facebook and Twitter.